This was a congenital deformity patient, having deformities of both the upper and lower limbs along with a pigeon chest. The patient was diagnosed with kidney stones and was scheduled for surgery under general anesthesia. Before starting the procedure, we secured an intravenous for line to administer fluids and medications. After confirming the four line was patent, we gave premedication drugs to relax the patient and reduce secretions. Then, the patient was pre-oxygenated with 100% oxygen using a face mask for a few minutes to increase the oxygen reserve in the lungs. This is an important step to prevent hypoxia during induction. After that, we administered induction agents, such as propofol or thiopental, to make the patient unconscious, followed by a muscle relaxant like succinylcholine to facilitate intubation. Once the patient was adequately relaxed, we performed endotracheal intubation carefully and inserted an endotracheal tube, ETT, into the trachea to secure the airway. The tube position was confirmed by observing chest rise, by lateral breath sounds, and end tidal CO2 monitoring. Then, the tube was connected to the ventilator, and mechanical ventilation was started to maintain proper oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. Throughout the surgery, vital signs such as heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and respiration were continuously monitored. The anesthesia was maintained using a combination of inhalational agents and oxygen. The entire procedure was carried out smoothly, and there were no major complications during anesthesia. After completion of surgery, the patient was allowed to recover, and the endotracheal tube was removed once spontaneous breathing and airway reflexes returned. After the patient was fully anesthetized, we carefully positioned the patient in the lateral position, which is the standard posture for kidney surgery. Proper padding was applied under the head, arms, and between the knees to maintain alignment and to prevent pressure injuries. The patient was then secured with straps and bandages to ensure stability and to avoid any accidental movement or fall during the operation. Once the position was confirmed, the surgical site was cleaned and prepared using povidone iodine solution, betadine, under sterile conditions. After proper draping and toweling, only the operative area over the flank region was exposed. The surgeon then made an incision over the flank area through the layers of skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle until the kidney was approached. The renal capsule was opened carefully and the renal pelvis was identified. During exploration, a large 19 mm kidney stone was found lodged within the renal pelvis. The stone was carefully dislodged and removed using surgical instruments without causing damage to surrounding structures. Once the stone was extracted, the renal pelvis was inspected for any remaining fragments or bleeding. Hemostasis was achieved by gentle compression and cauterization where necessary. After ensuring there was no active bleeding, a drain was placed near the surgical... After the surgery was completed and the sterile dressing was properly applied over the incision site, we began the process of reversing the anesthesia. The patient's airway was checked and gentle oral suctioning was performed to clear any secretions from the mouth and throat, ensuring a clean airway for spontaneous breathing. Soon after suctioning, the patient started spontaneous breathing. At this stage, we administered the reversal agents, including neostigmine and glycopyrrolate, to reverse the effects of the muscle relaxants given during anesthesia. The patient's respiratory effort and oxygen saturation were carefully monitored throughout this process. Once adequate breathing, muscle tone, and airway reflexes returned, we suctioned the endotracheal tube thoroughly to remove any remaining secretions. After confirming that the patient was maintaining normal breathing and oxygen levels, the endotracheal tube was gently removed. The patient tolerated extubation well and remained hemodynamically stable with normal pulse, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation. After final monitoring and ensuring the patient's condition was stable, we shifted the patient from the operating table to the trolley and then transferred the patient to the recovery room for post-operative observation. The overall procedure was completed successfully without any complications.